Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of M Crater. So today we're going to be looking at how to get something that will basically oxidize over time. Um, huge thanks to the M Crater team for helping me with the math behind this. So basically we're going to copy this over. Uh, right now it's just a waxed version. And then we'll use some commands that I have set up here to basically turn it to a unoxidized version. Now this will um, basically goes to the pre-set um, ones. There's actually like two regular blocks. There's one for basically generating the um, the actual thing and then if we were to place it down over time what would happen is it would go into a pre-oxidized state which is basically similar to how the um, copper blocks work so it will take have a, a delay time and then it will go into a pre-oxidize which will be a random time that it will basically update and switch over to the thing using math which is a lot different so there's different versions there's waxed versions as well as you can see here and basically over time what will happen is basically this it will over uh start to change the block states and as you can see it's kind of slowly doing that and if you look at the the cube uh, compared to the other ones, you can see that the amount has quite differently changed for the um, amount of uh, volume of what is still remaining. So uh, the single ones are the same as the pane there. So the pane, and if we speed it up to like 300, you can see that it will slowly start to change and stuff like that. So that's only because we first changed it to an oxidizing state. Uh, it will take about 20, like a day or so for it to even start to go into the state, which it will do at a random chat, like a random stage. Uh, now remember, we're still on the um, 300. It will probably even speed it up to like six or 3000 or something like that in order to kind of demonstrate how fast, well, slow, I guess, because um, kind of demonstrate how it will work but um, as you can see everything's pretty much updated at the moment there's one block that already started to update and it'll take a little bit of time for it to continue uh, the reason why it's like this is it's going to they all have that delayed um, timer so it'll be 100% uh, uh, guaranteed that it will have to wait for the next one even if the random tick update is set to uh, zero now those are the wax blocks that's why they're not doing anything but over time you'll see that it start to update like that all right we have one block up here that's in the cube there might be other ones inside the cube that we can't see but it's starting to slowly update over time and eventually it will go to the final stage which is that really dark one that you see right there so that will basically be it and it takes, I believe, like 20 minutes or something like that for each stage to go into the pre-stage cycle, which it will then be random um, based on the condition of how many blocks are nearby. Uh, this value can be set by a value that of a variable that I set up. Uh, by default, it's four blocks in distance. Um, but uh, the, the more dense that it is, like that cube or whatever, it will take slower amount of time to actually um, fully convert to the proper uh, thing. Now, it's the same math that um, Mojang's using. It's just pretty much done a little bit differently uh, mechanic-wise because it needed to be uh, for M Crater without actually hard coding at all. So... It's, there's just a few minor differences, but it's not too much different. So it, as you can see, there's a few different blocks here, which is really odd because the uh, the pane should actually have something on it by now, but it doesn't. So it probably still has a timer going. And um, yeah, so the, it will take a little bit of time for this to happen, but over time it will start to change into other blocks. Now you might be noticing that it's kind of random. And that's pretty much, um, I guess, the same as what the Minecraft version does. I'm not entirely sure. So let's speed this up to 3000, and we'll see if that helps with the speed. So even at 300 ticks, it was pretty pretty fast, So or pretty slow. So 
um, we'll just speed it up to like 1,000 or 3,000 or something like that. Even at like 3,000, it's pretty slow. So we'll just um, leave it at 1,000 for now, and then we'll see if we can get get this going a little bit faster. 300, 3,000. Yeah, we'll try 3,000, which is like 100 times more than the default speed. So something like that or maybe it's a uh, th thousand I don't know it, it the default speed is three so you do the math on that part so you can see the pain starting to update slowly and we should start seeing results on the other blocks so we can see a couple blocks over here to start changing and they're spreading a little bit and updating so you can see that and then on the cube there's hardly any progress that's actually being done so a lot of it's just uh, single blocks that haven't really updated too much and yeah so if we look over at that one it's doing really well that one's doing okay and the cube is hardly any oxidization going on and it is slowly for the single blocks uh, those for my first eter eternal test, it was actually going a lot faster. So I kind of expected them to go faster than the, the pain this time. But it, it's using the same code, so I don't know. It just is. Um, I think I did have some issues with the actual volume and stuff. But it does seem to size up quite well. So the cube works and the pain works. So I don't know. Um, if you were to double up the pain, it would probably be a little bit slower, but it might also be based on the volume. I'm not sure. Um, but according to Wiki, that's the same math that's used for the um, the copper block. So I don't know. But uh, yeah, so basically that's it. It will start to spread over time and um, try to oxidize uh, nearby blocks that are the same. And it goes through like four different stages. Again, I'll provide the workspace in the um, description so you guys can test the new workspace and stuff like that. So I think this is pretty much good for an example. We'll hop into mCreator in just a couple minutes and a couple seconds or whatever. But yeah, as you can see, it's a lot slower for updating than the other one. So, yeah, it might take, like, even at 3,000 ticks, it's pretty slow. But um, it just is. Um, not much you can do for the speed uh, based on the, well, you could set the um, the internal block timer to something lower if you really wanted to. And then the random tick speed would be based on the math for it. So, for example, the... Um, there's four blocks between all these, so that's how much the copper blocks require for it to be a lot faster. Though I'm not sure if this is like accurate or not, because it does seem like the pain is a lot faster, but I don't know. Like, I've seen videos saying that spacing it out four blocks is going to do it really fast, but I'm almost wondering if that's the case from this test. Because it is the exact same math, so I'm not sure. Who knows? But yeah, this is um, the workspace. So let's get into mCreator then. So in the project files, what you will find is the workspace and the procedures. Uh, the first thing that we need is the tags, though. We're going to call them stage one or stage slash one mod under the mod namespace and then they're going to be for blocks and then we're going to put our two blocks under these particular ones not the waxed version but the two different state versions that will update so we have the pre uh, generation one so the that particular one and then we also have the basic one which we would basically place down um, as a block the final one only has one stage because it doesn't have a pre stage all right, so once we've done that, uh, what we can do is we can go into the, we'll start with the normal one because that's the first stage that you're going to be working with. 
we have the metal block, uh, the metal block pre-oxidized, and then we have a waxed version as well. The pre-oxidized one will basically update randomly, where the metal block has a set timer. Uh, it's very similar to how the uh, copper blocks actually work. So, And then, as you can see, the final stage only has a couple of them, and then these other ones have all three blocks for the exposed and the... Uh, weathered one so the oxidized one only has a set value all right so inside this uh, what we have is uh, two update ticks and two right click events so the first update tick is for the main block uh, the one that you initially place down and this needs to be your pre-oxidized state so basically when you go ahead and uh, set up your own custom block this this particular procedure needs to be your oxidized state of that particular set so the other one is the one with all the math in it and honestly it's very complicated stuff I had to get help for um, figuring all this out and uh, basically what it's doing is it's going to cover all that technical math for the equation and this is where the distance is you can set the distance uh, based on how far apart you want it to be oxidized. This is going to be your own namespace, these ones right here. And then you need your stages for your variables or your tags on these sides. So we have one for stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. This will vary depending on what stage you're working with. And then down below, you need to set up your next stage. So in this case, it's the exposed main block which will basically end up putting down and it will start to run. So this is the equation basically that uh, copper blocks use and that's basically everything that gets compiled from above and it figures all that technical stuff out and then it will de decide to update the block or not. So I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't know how that math actually works, just that it works. So. All right, and then we have our waxed right clicked. So this is going to happen when we right click on the block itself. Uh, we will basically go ahead and we want to set it back to, like this is the waxed version. So we want to set it back to the um, unwaxed version. So we want to set our waxed block here. And then we want to test if the um, type of item is an ax or whatever tool that you want to end up doing. You might want to do an item selection or something like that. And then we're going to be basically running it on server side to play the sound and place particles on server side. And then down below, I ended up getting the math a little bit wrong or the procedure block a little bit wrong. What we want to do for this particular procedure block is damage the main hand item so that it will deal damage to that particular item. Now, if you wanted to use a particular item for uh, removing from the inventory, you could have left it the same way, but um, in this case, we'll just leave it like this. And then lastly, what we're doing is we're just basically setting it to the unwaxed version at the very bottom. So that's basically all that's going on. You might want to keep note of the item dot waxed dot or item item dot ax dot waxed off that's the sound that the wax off sound makes and then the particles are wax off for that and this is again is the um unwaxed version of that particular set so and then looking over at the um global variable it needs to be on the player right clicks on block so make sure it's on a, under a global variable for this one and not link directly to the block. Uh, this needs to be done or you'll be experiencing right click actions that will be make it a little bit harder to build with for the actual blocks. So it needs to be on global or a global procedure. All right, and then we have the, um, okay, th this is the right click one for the regular block. Uh, we have, we're testing for the stage, uh, the, uh, the tag for the stage one, and then we're testing if we have a main hand item. And then we're basically running the, uh, the sound effect and particles. And then we're just making sure that the um, block changes to the wax version. The set main hand item is going to remove the item from the player's main hand. So that's basically all that's going on in this particular section. You can set up your, your namespace and your tag as well as your item for what you want it to be. By default, it's wax or honeycomb or whatever it is. 
And I think that's pretty much all the procedures under this one. So we'll start focusing on the actual block itself. We don't have rotation or anything set up. Uh, all these can pretty much be changed if you wanted to, but uh, we have the, the name, we have it under that, we have what all these other properties. The important thing is mostly under the um, advanced properties tab. Uh, this is the metal block, so we want it to drop itself. Now the the regular block, the one that we're currently at, it should be set to 24,000 um, as a static tick. So basically this will only tick 24,000 if the player's within the range. That's really important. And this other block here, uh, we need MBT data because we're going to be using that. So make sure those two things are set up. And then we need our update tick linked to this one here for our metal block one. So again, this is the trigger for that particular update tick. All right, and then generation, we don't have anything going on here. And the pre-oxidized state, very similar settings. Block state, properties, all the same stuff. Uh, you will want to link up the drop to be the first stage. So the metal block rather than the pre-oxidized state. Uh, and you don't want it to be the, the um, what do you call it, the waxed version either. You want it to drop the regular block for what you basically placed initially. This time we're using the tick randomly. This is important because that's what the um, copper blocks use. And then what we're doing is we're going to basically run this per this particular um, update tick, which will do all that technical math for the calculation. Again, you want to make sure that all these are set up for the first version. It should look exactly like this, or it will probably not work. Uh, we're using tags just to make sure that all the blocks are getting tested rather than setting for each individual stage as it would take a lot more if you're going to scale it up. So just keep that in mind. All right, and then um, the metal block, the wax particular block, uh, there's not much actually going on in this particular one. We just don't have a tick update. It's its own pretty much block. Uh, no tick update for here, and it's not set to a random tick update, so it has no tick properties. We do use MBT, but I don't think it's actually needed if I remember correctly. And pretty much all the other things are just default. We don't have actually any procedures. Again, it's done through the right-click global procedure, so we don't need um, to do any of that. So the next stage is exposed. Um, pretty much the same properties all throughout the, the blocks, so keep that in mind when you're actually working on it. The only things that we need to look at for these is the actual procedures, so those are the only things that really change. Uh, though you might want to make to just double check to make sure that they're all set up uh, for the drop properties. All right, so the pre-oxidized state, um, this is basically your distance. This one here only has stage three and stage four, and we're testing for stage two down on here. And again, we want to make sure that this updates to our next stage. So this would be the weather block instead. So these are the particular procedure or your tag and your tag names that you need to do without the colon. Uh, the colon's already added into the thing. So all you need to, is your namespace and your tag name. All right, so that's basically the only difference here. And then we have the... Um, waxed version, not much has changed outside of the tag name and the block that we're basically going to update. So those are all pretty much the same as the previous one. Um, yeah, so that's literally, that's the only difference here. And you, you would set your stage two for your oxidization on this one. And then we have our waxed version. So this is, um, or pardon me, Pardon me, not uh, the regular version. This is going to tr change it into the pre-oxidized state. And then this is the waxed um, procedure. Again, you would want to set up the um, the damage for the item because it's an axe rather than remove the entire item. So if you were going to do that, set it up like this. Otherwise, you can just use uh, the similar procedure to the... Um, 
the item when you use wax to turn it into a wax block. That method would still work if you're using an item instead uh, rather than a tool. So, all right, so that's basically it. And then we have uh, pretty much all those same blocks. So we can move on to the next stage, which is weathered. So again, same properties as the uh, other blocks. Uh, the only difference is we're going to start with actually testing if removing the wax. So we're going to actually set our uh, regular block for this one. So the wax or the wax block, uh, then we're testing if it is basically we're turning it into an unwaxed version of this particular one. And we want to make sure that the damage is applied to the item rather than just removing the entire item. We can do that through the right hand item or item in the main hand. And then we can go ahead and just switch out the regular block. So wax block and then regular block for that same stage. And moving on to the other right click event. This is testing for stage three rather than stage two or stage one. And we want to make sure that our item is set and then our namespace and our stage. So that's our tag name. And then we're going to set this to the, the waxed version of this particular thing, this uh, stage here. So once you've done that, you can move on to the other procedures. This is the um, the two update ticks. So we want the first update tick to switch to the uh, pre-stage. And then for the other update tick, again, your distance is set up here. You have your namespace and your tag. So we're just going to be testing for stage four on this one. And then we're going to test if stage three is on this one. So the, that's the only difference pretty much for the other one outside of the, the block that we're turning it into, which is the uh, final stage for the uh, the actual oxidized version. So that's all that you really need to know. And then we have just a couple other procedures under the, um, the final stage that we need to look at. So if we go to, we covered all these, but again, this is the oxidize or the pre-oxidize pr procedure to turn into that block. And then we have the oxidized version, which is the final version. As you can see, there's no update ticks. We just have two right click vents for the wax on and wax off. So we'll start with the oxidized one. We're just basically setting up our namespace, our item. So this will turn it into the uh, wax version. So our namespace stage four for the blocks. And then we need our item that we want to use and then all that noise and particle properties. And then we're going to basically go ahead and uh, set our waxed version. So this will uh, change it to the wax version of it. I don't think this actually has any real effect because it's already fully oxidized, but you know, it just is. Uh, the other version is basically, um, we're testing for the wax version, the tool. And then what we need is we need to deal damage to the item. So we're going to use the main hand item as well. And then we're just going to make sure that it's uh, set to the unwaxed version of that particular block. And that's all that there is for the procedures and everything. That's like literally the entire workspace. So if you get stuck or whatever, you can actually uh, use the workspace uh, provided in the project files to test uh, and compare your settings. And there's also the assets for each of the blocks in the project files as well. So you can use those in your own mods if you really want to. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.